Awesome, right, I'm gonna go then. So, hi everybody and welcome to the Shelf Help interview. Uh, today I'm really, really happy to be joined by Dr. Tara Swart, who is the author of The Source, which is our book of the month, or book of the moment now for October and November. Um, this is Tara's first book and she's currently bang in the middle of a big book tour in the States, so very happy that she's been able to join us. Um, just give you a little bit of information about Tara. So Dr. Tara Swart is a neuroscientist, leadership coach, award-winning author, and a medical doctor. She works with leaders all over the world to help them achieve mental resilience and peak brain performance, improving their ability to manage stress, regulate emotions, and retain information. Um, this is her first book, The Source, um, and all that wisdom has been distilled into here, pretty much. Um, so hi, Tara. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, where in the world are you today, and what are you doing? Hi, Tony. Um, I am zooming in to you straight from New York, where um, it's launch week of my book in the US. So obviously it came out in the UK on Valentine's Day. Um, and it's, you know, it was a UK bestseller the week that it came out. And I've got these 35 translations coming out. But I, I feel like tomorrow is really the culmination of my life's work. So it's very exciting to be speaking with you today. Yeah. Um, and are you using some of your own tricks to stay calm right now? Or are you just enjoying it all and soaking it all in? Um, I was just listening to your introduction and you saying I help people to remain resilient. And I thought <laughs> I'm really like battling that now. So, you know, it's, it's wonderful to be out there. It's wonderful to be getting all the comments from people. But it is a little bit overwhelming. And that's when you really realize that your resilience is, is, is tested in many ways, you know, whether mm. it's that your head doesn't get turned by too many comments, whether it's that you're really fully present for people when I do all the pop-up events and things like that. Um, so it's really interesting. And I know we're going to speak about brain agility and I'm definitely thinking through all six of those every single day and just making sure I'm grounded in, in all of those aspects. Sure. I mean, I love to ask people because um, I get to meet so many incredible people through this job um, and it's that, and, uh, everyone's life is so different so my one of my favorite questions to start with is what does a typical day in your life look like I appreciate that what's going on right now is maybe not that typical for you but um yeah so as a neuroscientist and a speaker and a coach and now author uh what does a day or maybe like a week in your life look like when you're not in New York signing books and <laughs> yeah you've asked it really well because there isn't a typical day and that's partly by design so um, 12 years ago, when I started up my, my independent practice, I was coached by a friend who just started coaching at the same time, and, and she's still a very good friend. And I had this vision of balance and variety. So mm -hmm. I saw myself in the future um, doing a bit of reading, a bit of writing, a bit of coaching, a bit of speaking, and in fact, wanting no two days to be the same. Um, and is that because that what you were going from was a very kind of a very the very different way of living? I wonder if it was. I mean, yeah, that was definitely very boundaried and within very known structures. And there was a reason for that because you know when you're a doctor, uh, people's lives are at stake, so it has to be very very structured. I don't think I realised till I made the change how much more of a big vision kind of person I was because I'd been in that structure for mm -hmm. so long. It was all I knew. Um, it really just started with the vision, Tony. I can't I can't tell you that there was that much logical thought behind it it was more intuitive that i wanted that balance and that variety i'm i'm not somebody that wants to be employed i'm not somebody that wants to be in a day job that's the same every day however i would say that the main thing that's different now from five or ten years ago is the level of control that i feel that i have over what i choose to do and not do and mm -hmm. so i think all the hard work um <clears throat> which sometimes from the outside it looks like things are so effortless for people but um there have definitely been massive ups and downs. And what I would say now is, of course, you know, there can be a month where I don't earn anything or there can be like um, things that change around me that could change, you know, what I have to do and work. But I do mm. feel like I'm doing <clears throat> sufficiently different things that I could go more in the direction of being an author or I could go back to being more of a coach. So that's, that's quite a nice position to be in. Yeah, what a lovely position to be in. It kind of feels like you're doing lots of different things and then whatever you're, I suppose, feeling more drawn towards, now you've got the luxury of being able to do that. But like you say, um, overnight success, it was a long time in the making, right? Yeah, yeah you put that really well. I just, I always think of it, you know, when like a pop star suddenly become, you know, gets it to number one and everyone's like, she's an overnight sensation. Yeah. I just know that that's not how it was at all. 
that's not how it works. What about, um, let's talk a bit about the book then, The Source. And um, what, why did you decide to write this? Because you're obviously a really busy lady. You're, you're busy and you're, you've got a successful coaching business and a speaking business and um, I've seen your TED Talks. We shared that with the group and everyone loves, loves that. And um, so what decide, why did you decide to write this into a book? And um, who do you want to be reading it? And what would you like to be the biggest takeaway, do you think? Mm. So there's actually a really lovely segue from what you were saying earlier, which you, you put so nicely that I'm totally going to steal that phrase. But Go for um, it. In the brain, when you reach a goal or you, you, know, you bring in a new desired behavior, there's a tipping point where the neurons have, have made a sufficient pathway that that's now your new natural behavior. And until you reach that critical mass, it's really, really hard work knitting those neurons together to make this new pathway. Mm. And then it feels like suddenly everything falls into place. It's a bit like if you try to learn a new language, it feels really, really difficult. And then at some point it just flows more easily. And, and actually, I don't know why this is, maybe it's because I love books, but I remember the moment that I really learned to read. And it mm. went from clunky, you know, I could pick out the words, I could kind of string them together to one day it just flowing and me realizing there are a million worlds out there in the books that you can read that can just like take you away from the, you know, day to day nitty gritty kind of thing. So, I definitely have a love of books, although I don't actually have a love of writing. Um, but I felt like I had a message that I really wanted mm. everybody to know. Like the more I understand about neuroplasticity and brain agility, the more I think everyone needs to know this. And you know, you've mentioned my coaching practice, but I can only coach a small number of people mm. at any one time just because of the number of hours in the day, kind of thing. Um, so writing a book felt like the next step in just getting that message out to way more people than I could ever speak to or meet. Yeah, I mean, I feel, I feel totally the same with, with self-help. This is why self-help started really, because as I was reading it, come, like quite late in life coming to, to it and re thinking, why doesn't everyone know this? Why don't we all, why aren't we taught this? So yeah, being able to share that message with, with as many people as possible is brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. And what would you hope the biggest takeaway for people? like a top line. I know we're gonna delve into the, more of the detail of the book soon, but like a top line takeaway. Well, there's a top line that comes from a lot of self-help books, which I'm sure you've covered, um, which is the way that you think determines your life. And mm -hmm. I've always thought, I've always been fascinated by that. I've always been fascinated by the laws of attraction and vision boards, but I've always felt that that should be explained by cognitive science, because if it's about thinking, surely it should be explained by psychology and neuroscience, not by you know, either blind faith or what's happened in the past, which is that it's explained by quantum science. Um, that, that didn't make sense to me. So I, I think, again, one of the reasons I wrote the book, um, and therefore the main takeaway that I want people to get is that the latest developments in cognitive science because of our ability to scan the brain, shows us that it really is true that the way you think determines your life. And therefore, I wanted to give people tools to re-examine the way that they think, um, yeah. to empower them to create the life that they really want. Yeah, it's so amazing because the book we did previously, two books ago, was um, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, which is obviously a self-help classic from the 80s. And um, we had people um, who'd read the original and like kind of then Generation Z kind of coming to it again. And now I think about the, the themes in it, obviously brain scanning not around then, but the themes in it are so applicable to what you're talking about in the book. So it's kind of proving all these self-help gurus right almost, isn't it? Totally. And I think, you know, they've been written off as pseudoscience and they've been mm. um, criticised in the past. And, and I, you know, being both a scientist and a sort of, you know, a person who's on that spiritual journey, I can understand why they've been written off, but I also want to get what they have to offer. And so I really felt that I sort of had... The, the book you know both sides of that and could bring it together and that felt really important and I've had people from that whole range people you know who aren't in sort of scientists at all saying but knowing that it was backed by science compelled me to actually do the exercises and make the vision board whatever it was um and people you know my my science colleagues friends saying well you know you're the one that's going to be like a really famous author now because you've made it something that's for everyone and you know yeah, most totally. don't do that 
yeah totally and that's what I love about it so much that it's kind of because when I say when I said to people what book we're, we're going to be doing and I said it's a bit like the secret but then everyone says yeah but and it's like but the science behind it so yeah people who are skeptical um, are able to kind of say okay all right I'll read it then because it's got this credibility you are the credibility behind it obviously um, so so it's can any of us manifest a better life or is it only something that's open to people who are already kind of good at positive thinking and having that mindset well I think this is all about potential so I think that if you're already into positive thinking then it can really like become like a superpower once you understand the science and you do the exercises I think I think that if you're not that into positive thinking and it moves you along the dial, then great. Um, you know, something I do really appreciate is that, you know, perhaps people like us and your readers are in a very privileged life and taking the time to develop yourself is, is, is a luxury. Yeah. I think that, you know, I know because I have one story that really happened before I started writing the book it happened actually when I was co-writing a, a book before which is that I started mentoring a boy who um, grew up in a township in South Africa and I invited him to a book event that I did in Johannesburg and so he got a free copy of, of Neuroscience for Leadership and he texted me a few days later and said well I haven't even been able to start it yet because my mum's taken it and I know that his mum has five children and loads of grandchildren and she's on her own and she's, you know, she's living in a township in South Africa. And I actually cried when mm. I knew that she was reading my book. And so I think that, and I've met her since and, you know, she gave me like an amazing gift and thanked me so much. And, and it just made me think that it's easy to say, well, what if you're a sing single mum that's struggling to put food on the table? And of course, everything's harder if you're in that situation. But intrinsically in your brain you have the power to make your life a little bit easier mm. and that's really what i want people to to get yeah so it's, it's kind of meeting them where they are now and helping them improve their life this is what these principles can do so it's not because like what, what my friends talk to me because i'm I, I love the idea of manifesting the law of attraction and when my friends ambush me after a few glasses of wine and they say why haven't you won the lottery yet then if you're so good at manifesting or why haven't we all won the lottery or why do bad things happen but I think what you're not saying and we're not saying that you can suddenly manifest this kind of millionaire lifestyle, but it's about using the power of the brain to make your current situation better. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you've put that beautifully. But one thing that I do say very clearly, because I, I have got a chapter on making um, a vision board and another chapter on the science behind visualization. But I very clearly said this is not about creating uh, you know, an ideal fantasy of what you want your life to look like and then sitting on the sofa at home waiting for it to come true. Mm -hmm. it, I talk about the science behind why if you prime your brain with certain images, it tracks to your subconscious and makes it more likely that you will notice and grasp opportunities that might otherwise have passed you by. But I also, I actually call my version an action board because I say that you have to do something every day to move yourself towards that goal. It cannot yeah. be make the board and then, you know, win the lottery. Um, so it's, you can put win the lottery or, you know, one year, years ago, when I stopped putting specific amounts I, I needed or wanted to earn, one year I just put millions because it just represented abundance and like my business yeah. doing well. It wasn't about like the amount of money. So, you know, you may win the lottery as part of it. You may get a windfall as part of it. You may, um, you know, marry someone that changes your life or get an inheritance or whatever it is, but that may not happen. What can you do that you are in control of? Yeah. And we're not all, we're not all here to win the lottery, are we? It's like, yeah. it, it doesn't, most, most people that win the lottery do not improve their general happiness. I think there's no. loads of stats on that, aren't there? So let's talk a bit more about vision boards though, or action boards. And I love that idea that it's about, you can't be passively just waiting for something to happen. I think I put a quote up from the book today talking about intention setting um, mm -hmm. on Instagram. And someone said, uh, yeah, but I set, I set my intentions and things aren't, and, think, and it's not happening. So what do I do now? And it's kind of like that idea that just because you, you know, there's, there's more of a process than I want this to happen. There, ha there has to be action taking and visualization is a really key part of that, right? Yeah, visualization helps because it makes your brain feel like it's not a completely new thing. Um, so there's, there are lots of interesting studies on how visualization can essentially trick your brain into thinking you've already done something. But it's quite interesting because I read a paper recently that said that can be incredibly demotivating. 
But again, right. a little bit like the distinction between vision boards and action boards, I've always said that, you know, it shouldn't be about creating a fantasy. It shouldn't be about fantasizing that you're, you know, either that you've won the lottery or that you're married with kids or that you started your own business. It should be about the milestones that get you to those things so that mm -hmm. it's very much like about things that you can contribute towards. Um, yeah. And like, you know, like we said before, there's a tipping point. So if you start doing a few things like keeping yourself healthy, keeping yourself motivated, working on patience is definitely a massive part of it. Okay. Um, then you start to feel like, okay, some of the things that I've wanted to do are happening. Um, the more that you've built up accumulation of things and you, that you feel positive about, the more likely it is that some things that right now you feel you can't control later become things that you can actually do more about. So it's much more about, about that. Um, so I want to break down vision boards and visualization into two slightly different things. So, sure. um, but very much overlapping. So a vision board is a collage that you make preferably by hand, although you can do it digitally, that has metaphorical representations of what you want your life to look like. So even things like whether it's full or has space on it is an indication mm. of, you know, I want my life to be absolutely full and busy and social and, or I need space, I need downtime. I, you know, I, I have separate parts of my life that I'm interested in doing different things in it. The whole feel of it has to like really, you know, touch you deep down. Mm. Um, and then I do one annually, but I do think it sometimes takes 18 months for, for things to, you know, most things to have come true. So patience really is key. Um, and of, on my brain agility model, the fifth one is stay motivated and resilient to reach your goals. And I always have that image in, in my mind of the person that was digging for gold, that was mm. digging this tunnel and, you know, kept going, but got so fed up in the end that they gave up. And we can see that the pot of gold is just on the other side of like the next day's digging kind of thing. So you, you need to know when to stop and give up on certain things that aren't right for you. But you also need to, you know, be as motivated as you can to achieve the things that you really want, if they really are the things that you want. Um, and then where it sort of overlaps with visualization is, did you ever play Tetris when you were a kid? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, me yeah. too. I used to play it till like way too late at night. And then when you, you can still see it in your yeah. head afterwards. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's actually a psychological phenomenon called the Tetris effect. And so right. I keep my vision board by my bed so that I see it last thing at night because that state of mm. going from being awake to being asleep is a very powerful state for priming your subconscious. Um, and then visualization apart from that is really just, it's, you know, I, I do sort of visualization as part of my meditation. So I will like imagine, you know, maybe even like having this, this interview with you, I imagine like seeing what you look like, I know what you look like. I imagine sitting at my laptop. I imagine like having a really warm conversation that goes in a really positive way that, you know, maybe comes up with something that we hadn't both thought of before. Um, so yeah, that's how I use visualization. It's certainly not like a massive fantasy of a future that's like not real, really achievable, mm. if you know what I mean. Yeah, and I think also it's the idea of, um, it's not, it's about the journey as well, right? So the, I, I suppose hopefully, like you talked about, it's about the stepping stones to get to this place, mm. this, this overarching vision in the future um, and enjoying those as well and kind of being, uh, happy with what you have and looking at the good stuff of what around you now and that will kind of help more good stuff come in right that's so true but I think it's so hard and that you know yeah. when things don't go your way that just feels to me too difficult to do and that's why I write about journaling gratitude mm -hmm. lists lists of your accomplishments you know keep a list of compliments that people have sent you and you know shelf help have given me so many to add to, add to my yes. list it's been really lovely um because I find, and you know, I've written about the science behind this, that once you're on a negative spiral of thinking or once things are happening outside of your control around you that aren't what you wanted, it's quite, you know, that's where mastering your emotions comes in and it's difficult to get yourself back on an even keel. So it's more about maximizing it when things are good, when you're feeling positive, when things are going away, of really doing all of that intention setting, that mindfulness, um, and, you know, taking that as the time to do your, your vision board and, sure. um, yeah.
and then you have then you have the kind of tools that when things aren't going because i think like you say in the book and we all know like shit happens like it's, it's just stuff happens whatever where, wherever the vision board's going so being able to deal with that so yeah resilience and mastering your emotions key parts of that so you talk about in the book um, the brain agility model um, and I think mastering your emotions is one of those, isn't it? And resilience, actually, staying resilient. Yeah. So should we talk a bit more about um, a few of the concepts in that? Yeah, sure. Because I think you and I have been actually, you know, it's interesting how it's different when you talk to different people. I think we've been really grounded and really realistic. And we've kind of said, you know, this isn't promising you the world. It's using your potential to move yourself further. But I do want to qualify that by saying I've been doing vision boards for over 10 years and sometimes it takes more than years but everything that i have put on my vision boards and worked towards has come true Amazing. and i thank you <laughs> um and i funny funnily enough there was something that i that became more relevant to wanting it in my life recently but it was on my vision board for 2016 that i'd made at the end of 2015 and that's the one that was the turning point in my life so i keep it next to my bed even though i now have mine on on my phone for this year yeah. Um, and I'd sort of been, I would use the word whinging about it for quite a while at home. <laughs> and I got into bed one night and I suddenly said to my husband, well, it's on my vision board, so I know it's going to happen. So I don't need to worry about it anymore. And literally within a couple of weeks, it happened. Wow. Amazing. Year. Yeah. So I really, really believe in it. And I, you know, I don't want to give false promises, but I promise that if you put your heart and soul into it and do it properly, it, it's amazing the effect that it has. And mm. since the book came out in the UK in February, I have had messages from strangers showing me photos of places they've traveled to that were on their vision boards, saying they got engaged, they got married, they got pregnant. I mean, it's absolutely, it's mind blowing. It's so brilliant, isn't it? I so love I think you say, <laughs> yeah, go carry on. on. <laughs> no, 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 go on. No, I just was, I love the bit at the end of the book when you used to talk about the Holy Trinity, is it a mind, body, spirit, mm. and all those things working together. And this is, and it can, and it can create all these amazing things. So yeah, I mean, um, let's talk a little bit about trusting our gut maybe and, and that, that whole kind of like, cause you talk about the science behind it, but then there is an element of spirit, isn't there? There is an element of, um, something else is helping guide us and helping us achieve things. I think at the very minimum, what I would say is that you can't go against something that's like not meant to be. So, you know, saying I want to win the lottery, well, that, that just, just by saying that is so only about material goods. So it's, if you think more about abundance in terms of what's good for your mind, body and spirit, then you're moving in the right direction. And that tends to work better than just fi fixing on one thing, because unless you sit down and say, okay, what would it actually mean about me as a person in my life if I won the lottery? Mm. usually if you break it down like that you find that if you work really hard or you set up your own business you can achieve the same thing so it's that's giving away your control what you yeah. want to do is bring it back to what you know you can make happen and what you would do with that so let's talk about everything in brain agility because they actually like they have to be all together and at different times different ones can be important for you and you've already mentioned a few of them so they are mastering your emotions knowing yourself which is understanding your brain body connection and i'll take it further given what you've said about brain body and spirit mm -hmm. um trusting your gut which is intuition and there's so much science now that shows how our guts and our brains are connected um making good decisions so logic is in there but i've purposely not made it the most important one because we overemphasize it so much in the modern world then staying motivated and resilient to reach your goals and the sixth one is really bringing all of those together to create the real world outcomes that you desire. So it's essentially, sure. yeah, it's emotions, physicality, intuition, logic, motivation, and creativity. And creativity doesn't mean being good at art or music. It doesn't mean being in the film industry. It means using your brain to create the life that you really want. Mm. And, and allowing yourself to get into that space and not just kind of, like you say, not just running everything by logic sometimes. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, so there's a couple of analogies that I like to use. One is that would you, if you have to go on a, journey, a car journey, would you rather be the driver and set the destination and choose the route that you travel? Or are you happy to be in the passenger seat? That's the equivalent of saying life happens to me. I can't really control what happens to me. Hmm. And moving from the passenger seat to the driver's seat is a huge part of what understanding how your brain works gives you. 
Yeah. The second one that's to do with brain agility is if I asked you to build a brick wall, like, like a low brick wall, just to like cover the front of your garden at home. If you try to do that by yourself, just work out how long it would take you and how much effort it would take. If you recruited four or five friends to help you, how much less effort it would take and how mm. much less time it would take. So it's, if you use all of those capabilities in your brain, you just get a much better output. But we tend to default to the ones that we've been doing for a long time that we're comfortable with, that we know, that we find easy. So it's really about just growing and growing that brain power. Um, yeah, and also the confidence, I suppose, isn't it? To kind of not just keep doing what you've always done. And because sometimes we keep doing, well, often we keep doing what we've always done, even though it's not working, right? Just because it's more comfortable and we're kind of designed to, to resist change and resist new things. Totally. I mean, when I first started journaling, like for real, like every day for a year, the first year, it was when I read back over it, when I read back over six months ago, that it just hit me in the face that I am thinking and doing the same things and expecting mm. something different to happen around me. And that's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, when you see it in your own handwriting and you see yourself justifying the same, you know, thought pattern, it's, it's quite <laughs> revealing. Yeah. You can't argue with that, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> one, one question actually that we got sent from uh, one of our members was about, um, was actually, it's a kind of about knowing yourself, but what happens when you know that you're not in alignment with that kind of, and you're maybe a bit off kilter because you're not in a good space yeah. mentally or because like you said, sometimes things are, things happen out of your control. So even though you know that you should be doing certain things or thinking a certain way, if you're, if you know you're a bit out of alignment, do you have any kind of like tips or ideas on kind of how, how to quickly get back into um, optimal manifesting mode? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've really been there. I've been in, at the, in the ditch at the bottom of feeling like that. So I have a very clear answer to that, which I've learned over you know, 12 years, which is at that time, there's no such thing as should. Just be kind to yourself. Just go back to the very, very basic minimum, which is sleep, eat, drink. Well, drink or not drink certain things. Um, <laughs> yeah. Exercise and mindfulness. Yeah. So it's so the simple, like you say, back to basics, back to self-care, taking to good care of yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, those are the, th those are the foundation, the physical foundations of pushing your brain back into a better mode. Mm. And, you know, that's not the time to say I should be learning a new language or I should be going for a yeah. promotion or, you know, I should be starting to date. That's not the time to do it. That, at that time, mm. go back to basics, be kind to yourself. It will come back. Because it's so hard, isn't it, to be creative um, and to think in these kind of expansive terms when you're super stressed or when you're very tired because your brain is working in a different way, right? It's kind of just working in survival mode rather than giving you that the luxury and the space to be able to daydream. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've put that in, in sort of everyday speak really well, but I'll just back you up by saying physiologically, yeah. your blood flow, actually, it reroutes itself will not give up glucose and oxygen to creative thinking, to trust, mm. to you know, higher functions of the brain. So it's actually physiologically, you can't do it as well as you can when you're thriving. So just get yourself back into the good physical shape. Then yeah. you know, where, where I talk about physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, it's like you've got to have the physical foundations in place to do the mental work, to master your emotions to move forward on that spiritual journey. It doesn't work in another order than that. Mm. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's such good advice. I love that advice. Um, from your point of view, what's next on your, so, so things have come true on your vision boards, which is so brilliant to hear. Um, what's next on your manifesting to-do list or to manifest list? Do you have, are you still, do you, are you still doing this annually now that um, things are happening, you know? I am, st I'm definitely still yeah. doing it. And there is one thing on it, which I, you know, I also want to really demonstrate that we have, sometimes we have things and we feel like we don't deserve them. So we're ashamed to share them. And I want to, you know, to, I don't want to ask the shelf help readers to do anything that I'm not prepared to do myself. So although I will caveat it now by saying things with the book have been so beyond what I could have expected that I actually think that I need to leave some room for that magic. I shouldn't try to like, you know, say everything that I want to happen because things have happened beyond what I could have expected. But I have, like, you know, like I said, I wrote the book because that can reach like hundreds of thousands of people more than who I can actually speak to or coach. Um, 
basically I feel like a documentary about the book would be the thing that would take it to millions of people mm -hmm. rather than hundreds of thousands. So on my vision board, the metaphorical representation of that is Netflix. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Well, if you need any volunteers, come to Shell's help because I'm sure yes. we'll have lots of willing. Hopefully by the end, we'll have lots of great stories to share with you, right? <laughs> yes, please. Oh my goodness. Gather your stories. Get yeah. ready. By um, the end of November, we'll, yeah. we'll have an well, army for you. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to, that's such a nice positive note to finish on. I love it. So Netflix, we're all going to, we're all going to vision that for you. Um, oh, thank you. Where can, uh, obviously we can, where can we people find out more about you? If we read lots, probably people watching this are reading the book, but um, where else can people get in touch with you or kind of see what you're up to? Yeah, well, I've got a new website, which I'm really excited about because it's merging my more serious consulting background with my more spiritual side. And I've never felt brave enough to do that before. So please check out taraswart.com. I'm also really active on Instagram at Dr. Tara Swart, so D-R Tara Swart, Twitter, Tara Swart. Um, those are the main, main things. And what, that's where I put out all the podcasts that I'm doing. So that's the mm -hmm. best place to really keep up with um, where I am, which looks insane. I don't encourage anyone to travel as much as I do. Um, <laughs> but to listen to the podcast would be great. Yeah. I remember when, when we first um, announced this as Book of the Month and you said, I feel so far away right now because you're doing so much traveling and so much going on. But it's such a great time for you. And I'm really happy for you. And um, we love the book. I love the book. And it's like been life changing for me and for so many of our readers I know. So um, thank you for sharing it. Thank you thanks so for much. sharing you. Thanks for having uh, the time for us today. I'm really cool I have to, to, talk to say, to you. actually, um, you know, being, I've been away for a, a couple of weeks now and I will still be away for a couple of weeks from home. So actually hearing your English accent has just been so grand <laughs> and beautiful. Thank you. Oh, good to know. Good to know. <laughs> well, enjoy the rest of your time and good luck tomorrow. We'll be watching. Thank you. Thanks so right. much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.